it's always a conspiracy theory. So people now are, they're kind of encoded or trained for decades. Anything that sounds like the big guys are bad or they're doing something bad, doesn't matter what it is. It's a conspiracy theory by default. That's how people are programmed now. And you can see it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Even more insane has been, I've complained to endless amounts of people about this, but was the, is the, there's like a portion, a serious portion of the left in Britain who mm. are, who were pro lockdowns, uh, pro vaccine passports to a certain extent. Like it varies. I like it. There was a lot of people unwilling to stake a, a position on that, but like they were all fine with all of the totalitarian esque control during the pandemic. And then they have the audacity to sit and call the UK government fascist and complain about like the, the anti-protest bill, which is, which is obscene and disgusting. Right. But the fact Ooh. that they like it's the same government, <laughs> the same people criticizing the same government, and in one me measure, like you know, removal of, of freedoms and rights that have been long upheld as the, the like literal foundation of the developed and civilized world. One in one uh, in one minute, it's fine for them to just be removed by this government, and that's okay. That's for your own good. But in another sense, months later. <laughs> The exact same thing is the action of fascists and totalitarians who totally deserved all that totalitarian power that they had then. But now it's a problem. <laughs> like... Well, you see, people, the masses, they're just, they're innumerate. Um, a lot of people are largely innumerate by my standards and are illogical and irrational by, by my standards or your standards. Uh, it's just the way it is. And, and 30 or 40 years of grooming and, and kind of education to be like that has made it a lot worse. Obviously, I, I said way back at the start of the pan pandemic, I said, if you try to pull this one off with the people from the 70s, I mean, if somehow magically you could bring all the people from the 70s and put them here and let them have phones and, and internet, and somehow they know how to use that, but they are the people from the 70s. They would not fall for it. They would not have had the indoctrination over the last few decades, and they would all start questioning, or lots of them would, and it had collapsed. But they have people nowadays who are safest. They're all obsessed with safety. Um, they got their head in a the phone. Their critical thinking has fallen away over the last 30 years to, to, a, to an anemic level. And I mean, they're just perfect to pull this stunt on. And, and look, it worked. It worked amazingly. But the contradictions you, you describe are, are everywhere. And that's what ha this thing has been most akin to mass hypnosis or religion ideology. And, you know, when people are very religious and they're arguing, you know, there's not a lot of room for logic. Mm. You know, ah, you hate that guy because he's against your religion. <laughs> yeah, this other guy here murders babies, but you know he's with your religion, so you find a way of saying, well, oh, it's not that bad. You know, it's religion. Yeah. And that that's explains what you said. Mm. Yeah, it is worrying. So so you, you actually became, um, rather than just like someone who is, was lambasted as a as a group like you became like individually targeted um by oh. um especially by the the belfast telegraph and by a journalist who has been on this show sam mcbride who, for whom oh. i had uh and still have a lot of respect but lost a reasonable amount in in through the pandemic but he, he used to be a really brilliant journalist who who was managing to sell a traditionally unionist loyalist newspaper in Catholic areas in Belfast because of the quality of the reporting, right? Like Ooh. that doesn't happen, okay? Um, and then um, along comes COVID. Uh, there was a, a DUP, I believe it was counselor who, mm. counselor, yeah, who, who didn't want to take the vaccine um, and then subsequently died. And you were singled out stunningly as, as being in some way like, responsible for this death i mean like w w what even goes through your head when someone accuses you of something like that it, it it was the height of absurdity but i mean just going through the data and, and i didn't actually know know the counselor god rest his soul from adam but apparently i had replied to him on twitter and out of my thousands of replies or or tweets each month 
they sent it and I looked and it was true. I had replied, but I didn't even take any notice at the time. So I had no connection of any relevance whatsoever to him. But he was following a lot of people who were anti-lockdown and anti-this. And at that time, I didn't even talk about the vaccine much. So it wasn't even a vaccine thing. So his decision on the vaccine, it was based apparently on his perception that he was low risk. Now, he was low risk. And I said at the time, you know, if you say to someone, it's one in two million for you to die in a plane crash. That person could say to you, well, I know someone who died in a plane crash, so screw you. It's still one in two million. But yes, one in two million will. So the risk of a 45-year-old man, mid-40s, in Northern Ireland or, or Southern Ireland was vanishingly low. It was 0 0.03. And then if you weren't comorbid, it was lower again. These are tiny risks. So this gentleman was correct. Now, it did come out afterwards that there was an autoimmune condition involved. And I can only say that because it was in the newspaper. Um, again, there was no autopsy. Uh, there was no you know, death cert, or I don't know anything about those conditions under which this poor man passed, but it's, it's murky. Mm. And to connect it to me was, was pure propaganda. It was literally, now I had been through already a couple of months, uh, which I had no problem with because I'm correct. I have a massive network. I mentioned earlier, we may not be perfectly correct on every nuance, but we're vastly overwhelmingly correct on nearly every vector of COVID, especially risk ratios compared to the narrative. So I don't mind the attacks, but I got attacks on my professional societies, uh, letters written to them, clearly coming from groups, you know, 20 page PDFs catching everything they could say about me that was unethical. And I answered them all and ethics committee sat and they all agreed with me. The engineering project management societies, they all said, look, you kind of got a reply. I did reply, and they all agreed with me and threw it out of court. So that will tell you something. All the technical societies said I was correct. That actually gives but, me quite a lot of hope. <laughs> well, the other thing, and I'll get back to the story, though, in a moment. I'll try and remember where I left off. But the other thing is, out of my thousands of doctors, professors of, of metabolic and health science over the last 10 years, the very top tier of those, if I take my top 10 best brains in medicine and health, they all 100% agree with me from day one. Now, many can't say it. They got to be careful, but they do privately. And my corporate top tier of technical people, I am talking the rarefied top level technical masters. Guess what? They all agree with me too. Offline, because they can't publicly say it because they're in corporate jobs. You know the story. But, but that's it. But back to, the, back to the other incident, unfortunate incident, yeah, I'd have been attacked left, right, and center. So when this happened, I mean, I just said, okay, the Belfast Telegraph has been handed that story by the group, probably in the UK, who have been after me for three months. You know, they've probably handed a potted, suggested story. And uh, I guess this individual, Sam, who I'd never heard of and haven't seen him since, said, hey, I've just been handed a, a nice salacious kind of sensational story it's got all the emotive stuff you know mm. and and i've been handed it on a platter so he ran with it mm. that was it hey everyone thanks for making it right the way to the end of the podcast i love that you tuned in this long do me a favor hit subscribe because 80 percent of you bastards are not subscribing but you're watching my videos see you next time